So we are back, and it is time to unhaul Morbex. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing another unhaul challenge as someone who doesn't like to unhaul but needs shelf space, so needs mass. <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna be challenging myself to unhaul a certain amount of books. But before we actually get into the video, I wanna say a quick thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is my favorite, Book of the Month. <laughs> I love Book of the Month. As someone who wanted it for so long, I feel so lucky to be able to work with them now. And I just think Book of the Month is amazing. So if you don't know, Book of the Month is this super popular and fast growing service for readers, where every month there's five picks you to choose from for a book that you can get, and you pick one of them, and then that's your Book of the Month. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and their team like scours the new releases coming out every month and picks five of the most exciting books. And not only is it such an amazing platform for debut authors, they often have a lot of debut authors and like for a debut author to get your book included in something like this is amazing. They also always seem to pick the books that end up being some of the biggest books of the year. They have, they have their info out there that somehow determines, they know what are gonna be the big books. So it's a great service to subscribe to if you like wanna keep up to date with new releases, but like you find it a bit hard, you don't really have the time. I think Book of the Month is great for that because they kind of do all the hard work for you. Like <laughs> they scour through it for you and then every month you can just kind of see what new releases are gonna be really big this year and pick one to get for yourself. Also Book of the Month is risk-free so you can skip any month if like none of the picks personally interest you. I find they always have at least one thing that like someone's gonna be interested in. And you can get your first book for only $9.99 using the code MEGWITHBOOKS which is incredibly exciting. Exciting. So I wanted to show you quickly a few of the books included in this month. We have the next release from like the super popular writing duo Greer Hendrix and Sarah Pekinen, The Golden Couple. This is about this like couple who on the outside seem to have their shit together but then one of them cheats on the other one and they go to see this therapist whose license has actually been revoked and it's like all shady and strange and things start going wrong. I own quite a few Greer Hendrix and Sarah Pekinen but I've never read from them so I'm super excited to get to this one. And then we have A River Enchanted by Rebecca Moss. This is a fantasy um, and it's about this like unlikely hero who returns to this island which he lived on which he'd kind of been cast out of to help find these missing girls who are going missing and to try and figure out what's going on. And it's described as unforgettable characters, a spellbinding plot and gorgeous world building. So I just feel like this fantasy is going to be for me. Let's just be honest also about Book of the Month. Like there's something about owning a Book of the Month book with like the little logos on it. Like there's something special about owning a Book of the Month book. So go check that down below use my code if you want to get your first book for only 9.99 i'd really recommend it and i love them very much <laughs> okay let's talk about unhauling <laughs> Here's the thing, I don't like unhauling. I find it very hard, I'm definitely a hoarder. When we redid my room uh, in the summer, like so much stuff had to get chucked because I just hoard stuff that I don't need. So I find it very hard to get rid of books, but I have these shelves, this shelf configuration for at least like the next probably two years. So I need to like keep it under control because we're already starting to get full. <laughs> So um, yeah, I need to start unhauling some books. Now, when I did this last time, this is inspired by um, How to Train Your Gavin, by the way, he did it originally and I like stole the idea, no. <laughs> I did 30 books, I unhauled 30, which was hard. And then when I rearranged my room, when I was rearranging my bookshelf, I'll link the video if you wanna see the video of me rearranging my bookshelf, I put aside some books that I knew I wanted to unhaul, but I usually wait until the new year to unhaul books just in case I need them for videos at the end of the year or anything like that. And I have 14, I think, 13 or 14 sitting there right now to unhaul. I've already like come to terms with unhauling them. So I think we're gonna try and up it to 40. Being nice a little boring when you're in between the sheets. We're gonna try and uh, up it to 40 books that we're unhauling. Oh, I wanna unhaul a few from my TBR as well because my TBR is now over 200 books. I have a whole TBR cart over there, which I'm not gonna, that's all my new books. I don't wanna unhaul any of them. And then I have two shelves, double stacked of books, another shelf with wrapped up books. So like three other shelves of unread books. It's actually a problem. It's actually shameful and it's actually a problem. So I wanna unhaul some stuff from my TBR and also just some stuff that like I don't need anymore. So we're gonna see what that is. <laughs> we're gonna figure this out together. So let's just go straight into it. I'm gonna quickly fly through the ones that I've already decided 
I'm unhauling. First out the gate are two of the books. No, actually all three of the books. Where's the other one? All three of the books I read for the reading Kendall Carly. Kendall Carly? <laughs> Time out, hold up, hold up, sweetheart. Let's get it together before you wanna read. All three of the books I did from reading Kylie Jenner's favorite books video. These three are all getting unhauled. The Four Agreements, Only Love Is Real, and Pretty Little Liars. Now, Pretty Little Liars was like a kind of fun read. I'm not gonna lie. It was a little bit, you know, a little bit. Mm. It was like trashy, but it was a fun read. But I just don't feel like any need to hold onto it, especially like this ugly film cover. Anyway, so those are our first three. Then we've got two that I got for reading some of my old childhood favourites which uh, didn't go very well. I think I gave both these one or two stars. We have Beautiful Dead book one Jonas and Girl Missing. This one was definitely like when I was young I thought this was the epitome of literature and then when I reread it it was awful. Like sometimes I read old favourites and they kind of hold up. Like you're like okay you did something. You did something. This was horrendous. <laughs> it was so bad. I don't feel regretful one moment about what I said. And believe me, if I really wanted to, I could be a lot meaner. But I'm holding back. So that was painful and I don't want to look at it anymore because it was, it, I want to remember it as I loved it as a child, not how I view it now. We have two arcs I've got sent that I'm going to pass on that I DNF'd are A Marvelous Light and Sisters of the Snake. I don't think either of these are bad books. I think these are probably really good books, especially this one. This had a lot of buzz about it, but I remember at the time I just couldn't get into it. I don't know why. Something about the writing was just like, going in one eye and out the other. <laughs> it was just not working for me, but I think this could work for so many people and same for this one. So I wanna pass these on and hopefully they can love the book and like read these authors in the future and support them. And I just don't think these were for me. Then we've got some very, really old nonfiction. <laughs> that I just want to get rid of. We have The Beauty Myth, which I never actually read. We have, no one will know who these people are, probably, if you're not from the UK. Dave Gorman, Too Much Information, I read when I was like 14. He did like a TV show I liked when I was like 14. And Jess Phillips, Every Woman. I enjoyed this when I read it, but I just don't think I'm ever gonna reread it, so I don't want to hold on to it. And again, like, I'm trying to view unhauling as like, these books do not need to sit on my shelves. They can go out into the world and prosper and be read by someone else. So I did really enjoy this. I've like highlighted aspects of it. There's a lot to learn from in this book um, in terms of like feminism and stuff like that. But I just don't think I'm ever gonna read this again. And then three more fiction books. We have An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir, one that I was so sad that I didn't like, you guys. Oh! Uh, you guys go drag me for this, huh? Okay. It keeps me up at night that I didn't like this. Like, I really didn't like it. I feel so bad because it was sent to me by a subscriber and I hate unhauling stuff that was gifted to me. But it's just, again, not for me. If you go out into the world, someone else will love it. <laughs> I just didn't like this YA series and that's fine. And we're unhauling it. Also, Turtles All The Way Down by John Green. I can unhaul this one. Well, listen, we'll get into more John Green in a second because I'm debating it. I'm debating it. Other John Green, older John Green, I have that like emotional attachment to. Do you know what I mean? Like I loved John Green when I was a kid. Like I read, a, I read all of his books. But this one I read obviously recently. It's a newer release and I didn't like it at all. So I can pass on it. I'm still, I remember I said at the time, like John Green, needs to write adult fiction because I would eat that shit up. It would be so good. I just feel like the YA wasn't working anymore. YA has changed since John Green's heyday and it wasn't working for me. He then went on and published a non-fiction, which like, fine, but I would still like an adult fiction, please, John Green. So yeah, this one just wasn't for me. And again, pass it on to someone else and hopefully they'll enjoy it. And then finally, Where the Cruel Dads Sing by Delia Owens. This is actually my mum's, so it won't be leaving my house, but I'm gonna <laughs> pass it back into her room. Okay, listen, I've spoken about this a few times, we don't need to get into it, but the whole Delia Owens scandal of the murder that she is involved in <laughs> of the poacher I, it just made me like I, I already really didn't really care about reading this book I just had it on my TBR because I had access to it in the house and it was so popular that I thought okay I should read that at some point like people want to know what I think but I never actually wanted to read it it's not really my kind of book although it does have a mystery element to it it just never really excited me I never was like oh I have to read that I just had it on my TBR because I felt like I had to. You know what I mean? So we're unhauling it. It's fine, it's staying in the house. It's not going anywhere, but it's off my TBR. Okay, now we've gone through those 13. We actually have to think about this. <laughs> I 
Yeah. I hate it. Okay. Uh, here we go. Um. Okay. I've got some possibilities on the floor. I think I'm just gonna unhold them. I think I'm just gonna bite the bullet. Ooh, I just hurt myself. Okay, so the first question that I had to ask myself was, do I want to unhaul all of my old John Greens? Okay, tell them down, no problem. But like, these ones, like I do have that childhood emotion like attached to them and that memory, especially the Fault in Our Stars. I feel like some of these other ones I didn't really like, but the Fault in Our Stars I loved. Mm, but I don't think I'm ever going to read it again. And I don't like this copy, like it's so like you know, old and whatever. I don't, I don't think I need it. I don't need it taking space off my shelves. I can get rid of all of them and like, oh my God, that's five more. That's five more. That's how I've got to think about it. It's five more on my total. Fuck. I find it so hard. Okay, we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna do it. And then we have the whole Hush Hush series by Becca Fitzpatrick. I think I'm just gonna get rid of this as well. This is crazy. This was this one. Oh, I told myself I was never gonna get rid of it. Like these books were on my bookshelf for like so long, like so much of my life, and I'm like parting with them now. Like just I can't imagine it. But I reread Hush Hush, and like I already knew it was problematic, but like rereading it, oh my god. <laughs> Growing up, I read like solely Twilight, paranormal, you know, books that wanted to be Twilight, and this is like I mean, if you've read this, you know it's like. It's like one step further than Twilight in the stalking and like manipulation. <laughs> it's problematic. So I'm never going to reread it. And I, they don't even match because I have the paperback of one of them. So let's just get rid. How many does that take us to? 22? That takes us to 22 if my maths is mathing. Okay, now let's look at my TBR because I want to get rid of maybe like 10 from here would be nice. I'm going to unhaul The Darkest Heart by Dan Smith. That was sent. This was sent to me in a box of stories box. The other three books I'm still interested in, like those thrillers look like solid thrillers, but this one just doesn't interest me. It's more of like a like running man thriller. Do you know what I mean? No. I, I, I'm a man, kill people. <laughs> it, it's more like that. And that just doesn't, mm -mm, that's not my thing. Like what's the, what's the name? Jake, Jack Reacher, like that kind of thing. That's what I think this is. So I don't, it's just not the vibe. It's not the vibe, stop. Anyway, um, 23. Okay, any more on this shelf that I want to unhaul? I've got sent quite a few books by Verso Books. I'm reading one of them this month, Crippled. This was one of them, and this one just didn't interest me as much as the other ones, Terminal Boredom. My mum has read it also, and she didn't really like it. <laughs> so I don't think I'm ever going to read this. Although it's a nice short book to, like, have to, like, tick off if I need to read more books. Yeah, I just don't think I'm going to read this. Two more. I feel like this is going to be it for the TBR, though. The Memory Word by Sam Lloyd. This was another thriller that was sent to me and it's just been so long <laughs> since it came out that I feel like it's not really fair for me to like hold on to it anymore. I don't think I'm gonna get around to it. It sounded interesting when I was proposed it, but I've never really heard anyone else speak about it, and so I just haven't like wanted to read it. So we're gonna unhaul this. And then Atonement by Ian McEwen. This is from my charity shop era when I was just starting to get into reading. Me when I used to go into charity shops and walk out with 10 books I had only barely heard of. <laughs> And I still want to maybe read Atonement one day, but like this, this edition, it just doesn't excite me. I don't like film cover editions. I don't like it. I don't like it. So we're going to unhaul Atonement from my TBR. So how many is that now? 26? So I don't really see any other books off of my TBR <laughs> that I want to unhaul. Okay, I'm going to unhaul White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. This, like, I bought before a lot of people were talking about it. I think I got it in my January of 2020, if I'm remembering. 2020? Yes, I think I got this in Jan- yes, January of 2020 I got this because it, like, it'd been on all these lists of, like, the best, like, you know, non-fiction that you can read. And then there's been some controversy around Robin D'Angelo and her as a white woman writing these books and, like, making money off of talking about this when- yeah, I haven't, like, fully read into it, but, like, there's just ethical controversies around this book. And so I think I would just rather read from own voices, authors. Okay, come on, Megan. We 
gotta go, we gotta move quick. We gotta move quick. I am gonna unhaul. Okay, we're just gonna do it. We're gonna do it. I'm gonna unhaul both Cinderella is Dead and These Violent Delights. I read both of these towards the end of last year and I didn't really like them. I think I gave These Violent Delights like three stars. So part of me thinks like I have other books up here that were three stars, but I just don't feel anything towards it. And to be honest, I'm kind of sad that I didn't love this book that everyone else loves. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I feel like yeah, this is the kind of book that's going to get like snatched up if I put it in a charity shop. So um, I feel like again, this book should just go into other hands. And this one, like I really, I, I, I didn't like it. <laughs> I really didn't like Cinderella's Dead. We read it for my patron book club, which we have had awful luck in up until now. We The one we just read was Malibu Rising and we all liked that. We all really, really enjoyed it. So that's the energy we're taking into 2022 and I don't need 2021 energy. So now we're at 29, which is like, honestly, Okay, great. We're gonna get to 30. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. We have The Never Tilting World by Rin Chapeco. Now this one kind of makes me sad because like I have like a nice hardback edition of it. I really love the cover, but excuse me, I'll fix you later. She was very f***ing rude. I just decided that I wasn't going to continue with this series. I think I started the audiobook of the second one and I just didn't love it. I still want to try out other Rin Chapeco, but it's quite a bulky book that's taking up quite a bit of space, which could be used by something else. And um, I just didn't love it. I, I remember, I think it was like a three star if that it's like a dual timeline twin sisters story. And I just didn't really love it. And because it's so big, that's primarily why I'm unhauling it. So that's 30. Oh! Okay, 10 more, 10 more, 10 more. We can do this. Oh, I have, because my mystery shelf, you can only see half of it. Some people have asked me why I don't put my half shelf there and then put my, because this is a full shelf, why don't I put that there? It's because I wouldn't be able to access the only plugs in my room that are on that wall down there. So I can only fit a half shelf in here. Maybe one day I can find a way to have more plugs. But as of now, that's my only plugs in this room. So I need access to them. So that's why the half shelf has to be there. And I have to hide half of this full shelf because I don't have a lot of room on my mystery shelves I do have books back here <gasps> we've hit the gold mines we've hit the gold mines okay I can unhaul some of these I can do this we can unhaul oh my god <laughs> I think we're gonna hit the 40 you know so the baby's mind by Oyen Can Braithwaite again I just didn't love this it didn't feel like you know a fully fledged story for me and it was just a bit of a weird book 31 okay <laughs> you are so strong you are so strong. Your mind is so strong. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. You if I Disappear by Laser Joan Brazier, disliked this. Actively disliked it. <laughs> it's the story of like this woman whose favourite podcaster goes missing and she goes to that woman's household farm and tries to find her. We have The Islanders by S. V. Leonard, one of my most anticipated books ever. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I didn't love it. It's made me realize I don't like scheduled killings and, and then there were none retellings. If you're gonna give me shock horror, I don't know when it's happening, fine. But the reason I didn't like and then there were none and I didn't like this is because you know when the next killings are gonna happen. So like, what's the point? What's the point of me reading it at that point? You know, what's the point at that point? Hairpin Bridge by Taylor Adams. One of my most disappointing books ever in the history of ever because No Exit is one of my favorite books ever and this was like hot trash, it was hot trash. It was hot trash. I didn't like it. It was so... The most gripping suspense thriller you ever read? I don't think. I don't think. The Appeal by Janice Hallett. I didn't love this. I, well, I gave it 3.5. Oh my god, shit is falling off everywhere. Excuse me. I gave it 3.5, but I bought the hardcover version of it, of it instead, and I didn't love it that much that I need two copies. So that's going to 30... Five. Oh, okay. And then Marion Lane and the Midnight Murder, another super disappointing one for me. This was so anticipated because I love the cover so much. Your new release, murder mystery. Like I was so excited. <laughs> it was, this book was lost. It was a lost book. Like I feel like it didn't know who it was. It didn't know who it was trying to be. It was trying to be historical, but it wasn't historical. Yada, 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 yada. 36. Okay, 36. <laughs> That's given us a lot of space to put other books I don't absolutely love, but want to keep behind there. <laughs> There's a few more back there, but I want to keep all of those ones. Okay, um, we need four more. I feel like there has to be four more off of my TBR that I don't really want to read because that would give me like a bit less stress around reading and my TBR. You know what I mean? Let's think, let's think, let's think together. Um, 
Okay, I'm just gonna do it. I went through a stage of when I started being offered arcs, like uh, accepting a lot, <laughs> you know? Now I only ask, well, I don't even really ask for arcs anymore, but if I'm offered um, arcs or books from publishers, it's only books if I was like super anticipating them already. Whereas I went through a stage like this time last year of if I was offered a book and I'd never heard of it, never heard of the author, I would accept it. So it left me with some books that I didn't have this like deep desire to read and I may if I were to read them, enjoy them, but I just don't have that same desire as like the books I was most anticipating. And then I feel so much pressure because I haven't read these books that were sent to me by the publisher and I should be reading them before they come out or like just after they come out. And it just like is a lot of like, it's this niggling stress at the back of my mind. Like I haven't read those books that were sent to me by a publisher. And I'm hoping if I unhaul some of these old ones that were at that point, you know, that I got sent and I didn't really know anything about them, but I just accepted them because they sounded interesting. I will get more up to date on reading the arcs I get now this year. So Fireborn by Ashling Flower. This sounded really, really interesting. It's a middle grade, like inspired by like, I think like medieval times. It sounds really cool. It reminded me of like Brave kind of thing, but I just don't think I'm gonna read it. Same thing for this one, This Savage Instinct by M.M. DeLuca. This is about this woman who has just been released from this private asylum. Um, and she meets this woman who's England's first female serial killer. And she, I think she kind of comes obsessed with her and like fascinated. It sounds super duper interesting. And again, I think I would really like like it if I were to read it but I've had it for this long and I haven't read it yet so again I'm just gonna I'm gonna pass it on I'm gonna pass it on does that take us to 38 two more oh my god I feel sick okay I'm gonna unhaul Gacha Gocha I read this before I think I even had my channel and I just don't remember anything about it I remember enjoying it it's like this very short story about this family I think there's a marriage happening and how they kind of all deal with that but I just don't really remember anything about it I think it was like a three four star at the time but I think my reading has changed a lot since then and I just don't remember anything about it so again I think this would be better passed on to someone else one more guys one more I can't do it you can't you can do it. You can. You can. Um. <laughs> oh, I hate it. One more. Oh, okay. I'm going to unhaul this. I'm going to unhaul Midnight in Everwood by M.A. Kuznir. This was another book club pick from my book club and again I just didn't like this um which I was so sad about I haven't really spoken about it because I wanted to love this so much I've spoken about it on my patrons obviously but I haven't really spoken about it on my channel because I wanted to love it so much like so 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 much and I just didn't and I just didn't it's like a nutcracker retelling and I just feel like it was marketed wrong and like some of the characters in it just didn't work for me it just didn't work for me I think I gave it two stars so we're gonna haul this. There we have it, everyone. Oh my god, I'm exhausted. But that 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 is 40 books unhauled. And I'm already looking at my shelves and I'm like, huh, I've got a bit more space now. This is good. So I feel like it was for the best. Also unhauled a few books off of my TBR, which I just wasn't gonna read, and that's like a nice weight off my chest as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, I always find it interesting seeing what other people unhaul. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you've gotten to the end of the video, comment the black heart emoji because I'm seeing the darkest heart title over there. So comment the black heart emoji if you've gotten to the end. Thank you, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.